and I congratulate my honourable friend uh, for securing this important debate. Um, in my constituency, it's estimated that 4,000 people are directly <coughs> affected by aircraft noise um, due to the planes from Gatwick Airport. Uh, this figure relates to homes that are within the 20-mile um, uh, radius of Gatwick. Uh, however, many people further afield are also adversely affected. And I've met with community leaders since being elected in June this year, last year. Um, I've met with the community leaders from groups such as Pagney and Cagney, uh, representing villages, in, in residents in the villages of Eyfold, Plasto and Loxwood, all of whom are very heavily impacted by the airport. Um, concerns, as my honourable friend says, were escalated in 2013 when the airport moved the minimum instrument landing system uh, joint point back from seven nautical miles to ten nautical, nautical miles, um, which led to an increased concentration of arrival traffic over the areas in my constituency. And since then, um, the arrivals review has led to the minimum joint moving back to eight nautical miles, and this has only partially addressed some of the residents' concerns. Now, as we've all said, the benefits of Gatwick should not be overlooked within this debate. Um, Gatwick Airport adds £5.3 billion to the UK economy, and this figure is set to grow with the increase in passenger numbers and flights um, that have been discussed uh, already since 2013. And the increase in aircraft used in the airport has, of course, led to the higher usage of flight paths in and out of the area. Route 1, for example, flies over Plasto and Derfold Wood and has seen an increase of 6% in one year alone, and that's the year between 2015 and 2016. Part of Gatwick's success has been realised through the growth in long-haul traffic, as um, my honourable friend uh, for Arundel and South Downs has just referred. And this growing market, although good economically, brings with it greater noise burden for communities such as those in my constituency. Larger and louder aircraft have been flying into land at low altitudes, some less than 4,000 feet and as far out as 18 miles from the runway. These same communities suffer the arrivals too, turning at 3,000 feet above their homes. So it's constant um, uh, traffic in these areas. The issue is one of balance. We must ensure that we meet the demand for international and regional connectivity as this does benefit local businesses, travellers, uh, holidaymakers, employees and um, the local economy. However, noise mitigation must be a priority to protect the communities that surround our airports. I welcome the work of the Gatwick Noise Management Board, which brings together the community and the airport to share ideas and air their concerns. And I hope all parties maintain this working relationship and ensure that this is not just a talking shop, but does indeed seek the best outcomes for communities and for businesses. Continued community involvement is key, so I am pleased the government has decided to form the Independent Commission on Civil Aviation Noise with the aim of ensuring all aerospace changes are properly considered with the needs and concerns of local communities heard. The move to a more transparent air management strategy can only benefit the airport and the people who live nearby. And the introduction of options analysis in airspace will further this, allowing those who will be affected to engage with any changes that the airports propose. At least that's what I understand it will do. And I'm also pleased that the, ma the matrix and appraisal guidance uh, to assess noise impacts are being updated to include a wider radius around the airport, which will better represent uh, the impacts of air traffic to the wider community. And in fact, I particularly welcome this, having been woken up myself by a plane at 6 a.m. last Saturday. Saturday, um, and I live over 30 miles away. Tackling the change, the challenge of aircraft uh, noise pollution will be helped by developments in technology. Many advances have been made already, for example, better air traffic control, which led to the reduction in stacking over airports, and there is also a drive to produce quieter aircraft, as uh, my honourable friend for Mid-Sussex has, has, has just referred to. And I'm optimistic that the market will rise to this challenge, but Gatwick also needs to ensure that it is using the latest in most quiet, uh, the quietest technology. Having worked in the travel technology sector uh, for more than 10 years, I am more than aware of the growing demands that this industry faces. And there is a need for more capacity, and the UK must maintain its position as a global leader by being accessible internationally, particularly as we um, leave the e European Union. But the skies over the southeast of England are some of the busiest in the world. And as our airports grow to support our economic growth, we must put the communities that live in their shadow at the heart of any changes that we make. And we seek the support of the Department of Transport to lessen the burden of air, excessive airplane noise on these local communities.
Thank you so much.